Data communication is the electronic transfer of data from one location to another. An information system's effectiveness is measured in part by how efficiently it delivers information, and a data communication system is what enables an information system to carry out this function. In addition, because most organizations collect and transfer data across large geographic distances, an efficient data communication system is critical. A data communication system can also improve the flexibility of data collection and transmission processes. Data communication is also the basis of virtual organizations. E-collaboration is a main application data communication. Data communication has become so woven into the fabric of corporate activity that separating an organization's core functions from the data communication systems that enable and support them is difficult. Data communication applications can enhance decision makers' efficiency and effectiveness in many ways. Data communication systems also enable organizations to use email and electronic file transfer to improve efficiency and productivity. Here are some ways that data communication technologies affect the workplace, like online training for employees provided via virtual classrooms, internet searches for information on products, services, and innovation, the internet and data communication systems facilitate lifelong learning, boundaries between work and personal life are less clear as data communication is more available, and web and video conferencing are easier, which can reduce the costs of business travel. Managers need a clear understanding of the basics of data communication and networking, the internet, extranet, and intranets, wired and wireless networks, network security issues and measures, organizational and social effects of data communication, globalization issues, and application of data communication systems. E-collaborations and virtual meetings are other important applications of data communication systems for managers. A typical data communication system includes the following components, sender and receiver devices, modems or routers, and a communication medium like a channel. Before examining these components, you need to review some basic concepts in data communication. Bandwidth is the amount of data that can be transferred from one point to another in a certain time period, usually one second. Attenuation is the loss of power in a signal as it travels from the sending device to a receiving device. Data transmission channels are generally divided into two types, broadband and narrowband. Narrowband is a voice grade transmission channel capable of transmitting a maximum of 56,000 BPS, so only a limited amount of information can be transferred in a specified period of time. Before a communication link can be established between two devices, they must be synchronized, meaning that both devices must start and stop communicating at the same point. Not all internet connections require a modem. For example, wireless users connect via access points, and satellite users use a satellite dish. When phone lines are used for internet connections, an analog modem is necessary to convert a computer's digital signal to analog signals that can be transferred over analog phone lines. Communication media or channels connect sender and receiver devices. They can be conducted wired or guided or radiated wireless. Conducted media provide a physical path along which signals are transmitted, including twisted pair copper cable, coaxial cable, and fiber optics. Radiated media uses an antenna for transmitting data through the air or water. Communication medium can be a point-to-point -point or a multi-point system. During the past 60 years, three types of processing configurations have emerged, centralized, decentralized, and distributed. In a centralized processing system, all processing is done at one central computer. In a decentralized processing system, each user, department, or division has its own computer, sometimes called an organizational unit, for performing processing tasks. Distributing processing solves two main problems, the lack of responsiveness in centralized processing and the lack of coordination in decentralized processing by maintaining centralized control and decentralizing operations.
the advantages include accessing unused processing power being possible. Modular design means that a computer power can be added or removed based on need and distance and location are not limiting. But there are some disadvantages, including there may be more security and privacy challenges, there may be more incompatibility between various pieces of equipment, and managing the network can be challenging. The Open Systems Interconnection Model is a seven-layer architecture for defining how data is transmitted from one computer to another in a network. In all of these networks, computers are usually connected to the network via a network interface card known as an NIC. An NIC, also called an adapter card, is the physical link between a network and a workstation. A local area network, LAN, consists of workstations and peripheral devices that are in close proximity. LANs are used most often to share resources such as peripherals, files, and software. They're also used to integrate services such as email and file sharing. A wide area network, WAN, can span several cities, states, or even countries and is usually owned by several different parties. A WAN may use many different communication media like coaxial cables, satellite and fiber optics, and terminals of different sizes and sophistications, PCs, workstations, and mainframes. It also can be connected to other networks. This network, called the Metropolitan Area Network, or MAN, is designed to handle data communication for multiple organizations in a city and sometimes nearby cities as well. The data transfer speed varies from 34 Mbps to 155 Mbps. A network topology represents a network's physical layout, including the arrangement of computers and cables. Five common topologies are discussed in the following section. The star topology usually consists of a centralized computer, a host computer, often a server, and a series of nodes, typically workstations or peripheral devices. The advantages include cable layouts are easy to modify, a centralized control makes detecting problems easier, and nodes can be added to the network easily. In a ring topology, no host computer is required because each computer manages its own connectivity. A bus topology, also called a linear bus, connects nodes along a network segment, but the ends of the cable are not connected and they are in a ring topology. A hierarchical topology, also called a tree, combines computers with different processing strengths in different organizational levels. Traditional mainframe networks also use a hierarchical topology. In a mesh topology, also called a plex or interconnected, every node is connected to every other node. This topology is costly and difficult to maintain and expand. There are several important networking concepts, including protocols, TCP, IP, routing, routers, and client-server model. Protocols are agreed-upon methods and rules that electronic devices use to exchange information. Transmission Control Protocol, an Internet Protocol, or TCP IP, is an industry standard suite of communication protocols. TCP IP was originally intended for Internet communication, but because it addressed issues such as portability, it also became the standard protocol for Unix network communication. Two of the major protocols in the TCP IP suite are Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, which operates at the OSI model's transparent layer, and Internet Protocol, IP, which operates at the OSI model's network layer. To understand routing better, you first examine packet switching, a network communication method that divides data into small packets and transmits them to an address where they're reassembled. The path or route that data takes on a network is determined by the type of network and the software used to transmit data. In most cases, a routing table generated automatically by software is used to determine the best possible route for the packet. In centralized routing, the node is in charge of selecting the path for all packets. Distributed routing relies on each node to calculate the best possible route. 
A router is a network connection device containing software that connects network systems and controls traffic flow between them. A router performs the same functions as a bridge, but is a more sophisticated device. Routers can also choose the best possible path for packets based on distance or cost. A static router requires the networking routing manager to give it information about which addresses are on which network. A dynamic router can build tables that identify addresses on each network. In the client-server model, software runs on the local computer, the client, and communicates with the remote server to request information services. In two-tier architecture, a client, Tier 1, communicates directly with the server, Tier 2. An N-tier architecture attempts to balance the workload between client and server by removing application processing from both the client and the server and placing it on a middle-tier server. Improving network performance is a major advantage of this architecture. A wireless network is a network that uses wireless instead of wired technology. A mobile network is a network operating on a radio frequency consisting of radio cells, each served by a fixed transmitter. Smartphones make up 52% of all web traffic globally in 2019. This is essential for e-commerce as a growing number of customers are buying products using their smartphones. Wireless and mobile networks have advantages of mobility, flexibility, ease of installation, and low cost. Mobile computing might simply mean using a laptop away from the office or using a modem to access the corporate network from a client's office. Neither activity requires wireless technology. Because the information can be sent to and saved on a centralized database, it's available to other workers instantly. A strategy used by some companies called BYOD, Bring Your Own Device, has further enhanced the popularity of mobile and wireless networks. In October 2011, the Cellular Telecommunications Industry Association reported that, for the first time, the number of wireless devices in the United States had surpassed the number of people. In a wireless environment, portable computers use small antennas to communicate with radio towers in the surrounding area. Wireless LANs, or WLANs, are networks that are becoming an important alternative to wired LANs in many companies. Like their counterparts, WLANs are characterized by having one owner and covering a limited area. Wireless WANs, such as cellular networks, cover a broader area than WLANs. These networks include base stations, mobile telephone switching offices, and subscribers. Mobile devices register by subscribing to a carrier service, a provider licensed for a certain geographic area. When a mobile unit is outside its provider's coverage area, roaming occurs. To improve the efficiency and quality of digital communications, two technologies have been developed, time division multiple access and code division multiple access. Many businesses use wireless and mobile networks to improve customer service and reduce operational costs. Security is important in any type of network, but it's especially important in a wireless network. Wireless signals can be interrupted, and they're susceptible to the same DOS attacks to which wired networks are susceptible. There are several techniques for improving the security of a wireless network. In SSID, all client computers that try to access the AP are required to include a service set identifier, an SSID, in all their packets. A packet without an SSID is not processed by the AP. A wired equivalent privacy, WEP key, must be manually entered into the AP and the client computer. This key encrypts the message before transmission. Extensible authentication protocol, EAP keys, are dynamically generated based on the user's ID and password. When the user logs out of the system, the key is discarded. 
The Wi-Fi Protected Access WPA technique combines the strongest features of WEP and EAP. Keys are fixed, as in WEP, or dynamically changed, as in EAP. The WPA2 or 802 technique uses EAP to obtain a master key. With this master key, a user's computer and the AP negotiate for a key that will be used for a session. Unsecured Wi-Fi network could create privacy and legal issues. In data communication, convergence refers to integrating voice, video, and data so that multimedia information can be used for decision making. In the past, separate networks were used to transmit voice, video, and data. But as the demand for integrated services has increased, technology has developed to meet this demand. Convergence requires major network upgrades because video requires much more bandwidth. More content providers, network operators, telecommunication companies, and broadcasting networks, among others, have moved towards convergence. Applications include e-commerce, entertainment options, video and computer conferencing, and consumer products and services. As a tool for delivering services, the internet is an important contributor to the convergence phenomenon.